Just waiting till 9 p.m. Day 30. It's day 30 of daily devotion for the book of Esther, and I'm so excited. Like, um, tomorrow is the last. Sorry, let me change my mic. I think he's about to die as well. Anywho, so um, where was I? So this is day thirty of thirty-one days of the wooing. That's one days of responding to Abba's Adam pursuit. So this is this devotional explores the insights that we have in the book of Esther. Um, but it's just over a period of this one days, and it's in this one days you see that. Is an invitation to um, to to pursue a deeper relationship with God, to know God more, and to think about like um, how, what does God want to do with me, you know, in my business or in my career. Um, so, focal verses are from Esther chapter nine, thirteen to nineteen. Um, sorry. So I'm just trying to. I think I'm. I'm kind of decide whether we should go through the Bible passage just for like more to give context. So today's topic is repetition has its usefulness. Today's devotion, rather, is um, repetition has its usefulness, right? So I think maybe the best thing is let's just quickly go through the Bible passage, you know, so that we have like context. So it's Esther chapter 9 verses 13 to 19. So remember, if you don't have the devotional yet, um, then you need to you need to get a copy of it on Teller. 
as well as Amazon. So let me just quickly go through. So Esther responded, if it pleases the king, give the Jews in Susa permission to do again tomorrow as they've done today and let the bodies of Amos' 10 sons be impaled in a pool. So just to um, give context, remember that there was a decree first of all that Haman got a decree saying that all the Jews should be killed. Then because of Esther, Mordecai, everybody pitching in just to make sure that that plot was stopped. The, the king issued another decree saying that the Jews could fight for themselves and everything. But Esther went back and says, look, if it pleases you as the king, let us be able to fight again tomorrow. That's outside of the day that we're supposed to fight anyway. And then let um, Haman's sons be impaled on the pole. And so they gathered together on March 18, 8, they killed 300 men. Um, meanwhile, they gathered, they gained really for killing 75,000, but they don't take from that. This was all throughout the province on March 7 and March 8, and they rested, celebrating their victory with a day of feasting and gladness. So the Jews at Susa, so this is, we focus on this, it says the Jews at Susa killed their enemies on March 7, and again on March 8, and then rested on March 9, making that their day of feasting and gladness. So to this day, rural Jews living in the room of celebrate an annual, um, an annual festival and holiday on the appointed day in late winter when they just have send gifts of food to each other. So let's look at the, the devotion, right? So, you know, I just I always think about how, like, one of these saddest. So, I have like a couple of stories in the Bible, like a couple of events in the Bible that every time I read it, I'm just like, Are you serious? Are you really serious right now? Um, my reaction is that of like, or maybe empathy because I know that this person could actually have been me. This thing that this person did, I could have been me. The first one is the story of the of the man that put out his hand to steady the apple but till today. Like I just I'm just always like did that really like did he have to die? You know, but this is where I'm going. The second one is the story of the king where he says he has to the prophet tells him to strike the ground with arrows for a number of times because just to signify that he's going to defeat you know another country's army but he strikes them only three times and the prophet says why did you do three times you should have done more so that you would you would have totally overcome your enemies but now you need to find defeat your enemy three times and i'm like why why did this information come after he had made the mistake why did the information come before and so you know i think that if he knew that the way i handled this arrow will determine how whether whether my enemies are going to get the best of me or not he would have probably like done things differently i think so and that is you know that's how the world is wicked because we all know better with benefits of hindsight like you never know it's only when you've done you say ah if i tried one more time more you know maybe this thing will not be like it. so there are times when you know there are some times when you achieve things after a lot of attempts there are times when, you, when things fall into place at the first try However, to the extent that it's difficult to tell which of the circumstances in life require a bit of persistence and repetition and which circumstances do not, to win our best interest to approach life knowing that repetition has its way. So this is the advice or this is the point. The point is until you unless you have hindsight, you can't tell that, oh, I can do if I do this thing up until five times, that's how that's when I will succeed at it. You don't know whether if you do it once you succeed at it. So the thing is just keep doing keep doing until you get the result that you want if you have to do it five times you have to do it ten times if you have to do it, because there's no way you don't know if you stop at the second time you'll never get to the tenth time and you'll never get what you're looking for so let me just say it again let me just read it. i feel like it's really soft it says there are times when things fall into place at the first try however to the extent that it's difficult to tell which circumstances in life require a little bit of persistence and repetition and which circumstances do not to be in our best interest to approach life knowing that repetition has its usefulness so how do the focal verses apply to you as you can see from the reference bible passage the jews in society needed an additional day for the decree to be effective so they could utterly destroy human's lineage and truly finalize their victory so um point is like don't rest on your laurels like when you feel like oh I've got in there. So there's of course first of all like just keep trying trying to get the door. Second one is don't rest on your laurels. Like when you feel like oh I've I've gotten to this point, then keep at it, you know.
since the second is two, we should be aware of our, on our lawyers as soon as we catch a glimpse of what we think success will look like. The second is to push a little bit more and do it again, again, and again until that elusive success moves into our neighborhood, right? So basically, this is just probably like telling you that sometimes the, the, what's the standing between you and the result that you want is that repetition of persistence. So if if you don't if you don't persist, you will not get the result that you want. So let's pray. So how do they say it these days? They say rinse and repeat. They say we go again. You're always going. So um, let's pray. Thank God for second chances. You know, because sometimes you really don't get the. And that's one thing you need to realize. Sometimes you don't get the opportunity to go back to correct some things that you've done wrong. You know, so so thank God for all the times that you had the opportunity to make like a second impression, to do something again. Maybe a client that you got their order wrong, and you can fix it, right? So you got an opportunity to do it again. So thank God for that. Um, thank God for the times where the second time was a charm, where like you you could have given up, but somehow something just told you, you know what, just try one more time, and you tried and you walked. So thank God for the times that second time was a charm. Then repent of the times they approach your business or career half, half heartedly, yes, by all means. So think about all the times where you had just been like, well, let me just do this thing, I beg, I can't kill myself. Repent. Repent is to do like a total turnaround, right? Um, finally, Ask God to give you a second chance today to remedy a past class situation where you had not initially put your best foot forward. So think about like a time where you did something and then it turned out that you had like you needed something to remedy it but you couldn't. So ask God to give you a second chance today so that you can remedy that situation in question. So take action by doing this today. Meditate on the action verse really. Um, I can't stress that enough. God speaking says I will give you a new heart. I'll put your new spirit within you. Hi, Femi. Since I'll give you a new heart, put a new spirit within you. I will um, take out your ten, your stony stubborn heart and put in your tender, responsive heart. For you to be able to, for you to be able to approach repetition with an open mind. For you to be to be able to go again and again and again and again. You need, you actually need a new spirit and a new heart. I tell you, because. If you're like, there's a way you know that like, you, you get so many, so many rejections. They're just like, well, I think I'm done. I'm not doing anything again. So, um, so you need, you need a tender and responsive heart. You need a new spirit to be able to do what you need to do. And then, so take action again. This is how you take action. Reflect on the last time you approached a task or client half heartedly. What do you think was the reason? What would you do differently? So I think maybe the first thing, and sometimes. Uh, what I'll just say, what I'll say here is I remember one time when I was, sorry, I just shook the thing. I remember one time when I was like so tired at work. As in, I, w I just felt that I was very cranky. Something was just not right to do. I was approaching work. I, you know, my partner was speaking to me. And I just felt like I don't want to listen to you. And I knew immediately, like, I had to go and leave because I was, because what I was, it was just pent up tiredness that was affecting me, you know. So when you get tired, so think about the times, when, what, what are the triggers for you, you know, like approaching work half-heartedly, for you doing things at supper, what are your triggers? I mean, I think that's how, you know, that's how it's spoken to, what are your triggers? So I think for me at that time, I realized that I needed to go and live like yesterday. So I just carried myself and went on a two or three day break and came back. And I tell you, it was like, I should have done this earlier. Because it now became clear that the reason why I was just a very cranky, very just like, can I just get this out of the way? It was because I was tired, I needed to rest. And I wasn't listening to anybody because I just, I just felt like I, felt I was fed up. So reflect on the last time, that's what I'm saying, think about the times that, you know, think about why, why did you have that reaction? Why were you not, why didn't you really care about the client or the task? Why were you like, say, British Caribbean, while I'm great. As in, for those that don't speak, you know, in general English, it means like people should leave you alone and let you be. But if people can't let you be because you're, you know, you're a professional, providing service, that's why they're coming to you, right? So reflect on the last time I put a task for clients, half heartedly, what do you think was the reason, what would you do differently, okay? Um, so I think that's really the end of today's devotion. Oh my God, tomorrow is the final day. Oh my God, I'm so excited. So see you tomorrow, hopefully by 12.30. I'm not, I'm not sure I want to do this by 9. Today was quite a long day for me. And 
to be honest, I'm just stretching it, doing this by nine. But I don't want to do this by nine o'clock, so nine p.m. tomorrow. By God's grace, twelve thirty, God willing. So day thirty one, the devotion for this one is writing down. I'm so excited. Like you don't know how happy I am to be able to have started this and got into this point. I'm so grateful to God, and I'm also grateful to you because you, you know, you've done well for you to have done day one to day thirty one. You are a superstar, seriously. Overall, I thought I was the one I was going to be the overall best in consistency, but I feel like for the fact that you started and you got to this point, okay, let me keep it. I'm going to give the award of our overall best in consistency to you know if you complete it. So, see you tomorrow by 12 30. God bless you. Um, have a lovely, lovely night rest, and I pray that God bless God blesses you. God blesses your business, God blesses your career. And God will be your glory and the lift of your head. See ya. Catch ya later. Bye.